Hi there, you're listening to Unnatural Selection, the show about newsy type stuff and things. My name is George. My name is Tom. And my name is Adam. And with our powers combined, we are Unnatural Selection. Make sure you visit us at our salubrious home on the web, unnaturalshow.com. Back for another week, but this time, <laughs> this time on Twitch, uh, oh. as well as our traditional uh, uh, audio recording, uh, for reasons which we'll get into. But what, uh, yeah, what, what possible reasons could there be, Adam? Other than we are an avid community of video game fans. Yes, yes, uh, we're slightly outside our uh, remit, here, or the the Twitch's remit here, perhaps. Mm. But, uh, they let us do it, so. That's, Great. I mean, that's put them one step ahead of Facebook in that they've allowed us to live stream. So uh, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, we're a comedy podcast about newsy type stuff and things, hmm. but according to Facebook, um, we are the news. So we're not allowed to post or um, live stream or do any of the things that we've been doing on Facebook for many years now um, because I guess we're basically the same thing as the Sydney Morning Herald and they're not interested in finding out the difference. No, no, we're definitely, you know, if, if you're listening to the show, you're definitely after the facts. So, therefore, um, you can't, uh, you know, be present on Facebook, apparently. Um, that said, I, I, we were just discussing before the show about functionality. And previously, I don't think we were allowed to post. And now I, the post functionality has been unlocked, at least for desktop, whereas mobile. Like I can't see anything on on the mm. mobile, mm. so it seems to be affecting different uh, what do you call it um, methods or um, access points differently. Mm -hmm. But has it has it prevented us from posting literally anything, or is it like it'll detect if it's a link? So the other day, to something or yeah, yeah. The other day, I put a post up on our Facebook just to mm. say, "Hey, guys, testing to see whether this post will work." And I couldn't see any posts that were on my mobile device. I made mm -hmm. that post from the mobile device and I couldn't see it went through. So I assumed that it had been it had been blocked. Like we had effectively been blocked. Now, I don't know whether it's a case of it went through and you can only see it on desktop or whether or not in the last like 24 hours, it's now given us the ability to post. But it certainly, right. as George said, we can't live stream. Um, so... To, to some degree, we have been limited. And, of course, everyone in Australia, whether you're us or whether you're not, we now can't share any articles which Facebook determines as being news. Which from is, a, Yeah. From, from any news or just from an Australian news organisation? Australian news organisation. But it'd be interesting to share, if we tried to share the New York Times, whether or not that mm. would be allowed. So... Mm. Is a bit of slippage there, and I think certainly when they first did it, it was literally everything. So the whole rollout of this, and I think it's been deliberately, annoyingly scattershot to for Facebook to prove their point. They're like, according to the media bargaining code, which is written and it's overly broad, this could apply to just about anything, including mom and pop community groups, including um, George the Tom Royal Adams. Children's Hospital. Yeah, yeah, like they, they came, <laughs> under, found out. came under fire and criticism for for banning, you know, information about vacines and like community information hubs about the COVID nineteen, mm. you know, vaccine rollout and all this the sort of stuff. Like, yeah, the Weather Channel because, um, fuck you, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> it's it's been a really, um, yeah, I would say deliberately scattershot approach to show like, well, according to this reading, that constitutes just about mm. anything. Um, so I don't know if it's them just swing their their big dick around to prove a point, or if it's really just been totally rough shot in how it's been implemented. But it seems like things are sort of coming on and offline, depending on which, which makes me think that yeah. it's 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 not been well thought through. So what? Should we go back? No. Should we go back? Are you War. telling me that the company <laughs> that accidentally facilitated a genocide? In uh, in Myanmar and displaced uh, yeah, hundreds of thousands of Rohingya because of uh, how they let their platform be used. Are you telling me they didn't really think this through? That doesn't no. seem like Facebook. No, surely not. In the you know 2016 election, they also weren't uh, you know party to misinformation and, and other bits and pieces as well. But uh, no, no. But we'll, we'll give some context. So we have spoken about this a few times now, uh, which is the Australian Media Bargaining Code and how the purpose of it 
from the government's perspective is that they want news organisations uh, to, to be pay Rupert Murdoch his thirty pay. pieces of silver. Uh, the, the news organisations uh, to get to get uh, some revenue from large digital companies, specifically Google, Facebook, and the various subsidiaries of those companies. And and like previously, I've thought it's mostly fair enough. Like I really don't understand why there is such resistance to the idea. If Facebook, like Facebook and Google have gone to great lengths over the last 10 years to make themselves the repositories for all traffic that comes through the internet and doing so mm. in a way that completely hollows out the media industry. And it seems only fair enough that there is some kind of governmental intervention to redirect some of this money back into journalism because they're the ones who profit off the journalism being made and the news companies are finding it increasingly hard to do so. So like in the situation of Google, for example, they, they're really good at making sure that the information that they put together is well presented. You know, the images that you um, that you search for based on news stories um, come up uh, in a way that's curated and relevant to you. And they're getting information about you, about you and your profile and the things that you're interested in. And therefore, they can market at you more efficiently. A lot mm. of times, though, the, if you search for this stuff on Google, you'll just look at what's on Google and you won't actually go into the article. So they're profiting mm. off the effort yeah. of the journalistic apparatus with, without contributing any money back at this point. Um, and and so, Facebook even has like, uh, I remember last year they released a like, is it last year, the year before? Some like instant articles thing. So rather than clicking on the article and going to the news website, you would actually click into an article and it's like a mini reader. That's the article yeah. that's been put together by the news organization, but it's still within Facebook. You're never leaving Facebook. Um, and sort of directing the traffic elsewhere. And so like so much of the conversation in newsrooms over the last 10 years are like, how do we get more traffic from Facebook? How do we tweak the algorithm? How do we write our headlines better? How do we do our SEO better? How do we boost our push on Facebook to make sure that we get the most amount of traffic? And meanwhile, Facebook's saying, great, love that you're on the platform. And meanwhile, if you want to reach any of your audience now, then uh, that you've spent time and money and effort building up, you now need to pay us for the privilege to do that. So boost, just boost the post, bro. Just, just need boost, to boost the post. Just spend, just boost the post. Just just spend, spend a couple up. of brand, yeah. a couple of grand to boost your post. Why is being such a fucking cheapskate to get access to your own audience that we made you do? So, <laughs> so to be clear, uh, so Google, you know, they, a couple of weeks months ago, they started putting up little notifications. I mean, like we're gonna pull out of Australia. Yeah, and and all this was, kind of stuff. There was a running joke on Irrational Fear where just uh, uh, they'd be like playing. Uh, which is a, like a satirical news comedy podcast here in Australia. And they um, just every now and then would have like an ad break and it's Mel Silver going, hi, I'm Mel Silver from Google. Like, and it just like get, get like 10 times throughout the episode. We just like keep coming. Hi, I'm Mel Silver. I'm like, no, <laughs> piss off, go away, Mel Silver. It was which just is, constant. Mm, All these ads like, were popping up fucking watching, constantly in Google. If you're watching YouTube, it was like every 20 seconds. Like oh you my God. A new video and it's like, oh, here's the notification again. Anyway, but Google, over the last, I don't know, month or so, they've actually come to the table and they've started to comply with what the code is after. So well, the, here's the point of the, 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 point the, of the code. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. The point of the code is that they want media organisations to come to a commercial agreement with the digital companies, mm -hmm. okay? And if they can't come to some sort of agreement, then they go to arbitration. So Google has now started to do that. Um, I think they've done it with, I think, some of the Murdoch companies. Um, I think Fairfax, maybe. I think the ABC. Yeah, is all the majors. Yeah. Um, anyway, so Google have started to just play ball. But the reason is, is because money. <laughs> but because money. Um, but when, it's interesting that you say that they're coming to the table and they're playing ball. They're really just reverting to the argument, uh, to the agreement that they proposed 12 months ago. Like, it's not like we got a brand new thing that's like, yes, we fucking nailed it. We got them up against the wall. Google's just gone, okay, well, let's do that thing that we offered you 12 months ago and you guys said no to. And they're like, great, we got him, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we got him. But again, that's the point of the code is to try and force people to come to some sort of commercial arrangement. Yeah. Um, Tom, I'm interested because you're the one of the one of us that's actually studied journalism. Uh, what are your thoughts on the code, have you looked at the code at all? Do you have any sort of opinions on it? Well, I, I, I guess I'd sort of come at it from, as George sort of very like, succinctly put earlier, that it, it very much uh, is a situation where people were consuming journalistic work 
um, because so many people, like, you know, how many people just skim the headlines or the first par, or first couple pars of, <laughs> uh, like, of the newspaper? Like, you know, that's just what yeah. people might have just looked at. You're not actually, like, you don't sit down and read the whole thing cover to cover. People are like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, oh, wow. Like, um, how many thousands of people died where? Cool, okay, and just kept going and going and going rather than actually, like, reading the thing in depth. So if you mm. are just picking up your headlines from what is collated in Google or Facebook, and particularly where I think similar to Facebook sort of feature, Google often would have little windows sort of at the top that might actually have its own little summary mm. on a news story based on like what it's picked from all these other locations. Um, yeah, it just totally ruins the traffic. And and we as people, I guess the um, the part of it that I was really thinking about was how everyone complains about the degradation of media quality, like that mm. people are going for more clickbaity sort of stuff or um, like too many advertisements complaining about paywalls. Like mm. if you're wanting to have a diversified view of um, of media across the world rather than just like being narrowed into the slant of one particular news organization, you've got to be mm. paying like five different subscriptions to be getting all this sort of stuff. Um, the reasons for a lot of those things popping up is because of stuff like this, because mm. of like the big social media giants, like, pin like p using algorithms to pinch and uh, uh, distort the data where they, they, they want you to, to click on their links because like, uh, yeah, you get everything that you feel you need without having to click on it. So they have to try and like phrase it in such a way where you, you can't have a vague sort of like, oh, general idea of what's going on in the news just by having seen the headline in the first par anymore mm. because they need you to click it and read it. Cause otherwise, and it's not a thing of like, ah, oh, damn it. You tricked me. You tricked me into that story being boring. Like, ah, oh, fuck. Mm. It's like, it's not that it's that, they they're a business like mm. it, it, journal, like journalism even at its core even when it has the you know the fourth estate like voice of the people keep the bastards honest i think i've said this before on the show it's also it's a business like people need like people need to be paid and people need to yeah. live and it needs to actually recoup like profits yeah. to be able to exist like doing it for profit like running it like an amazon s capitalistic enterprise probably not uh it's probably not ideal for like the integrity of news media um, um the, but... the interesting thing though about the code about and uh, and yeah so journalists this week have asked like is there an undertaking from any of the major news organizations that have been um that have that have signed up with this this new agreement with google is there an undertaking from them to actually hire more journalists and the answer in large part seems to be no like mm. the abc has said yeah we'll we'll put more money into um regional journalism which is obviously suffering um you know the guardian has said yes we'll hire more journalists if you give us more money uh and everyone else has been like eerily quiet on the question you know so mm. in terms of murdoch and and you know seven seven media group and nine nine fairfax and all these sorts of other mm. media organizations, they've just gone, no, no, no. We were just going to put that money straight in our pockets. We don't need to hire more journalists. Like we've, we've slimmed it down as much as we can more or less possibly slim it down. And the minute that we can do this all via algorithm and not have to hire any fucking journalists whatsoever, we absolutely will. So, mm. um, I mean, they haven't said that, but the absence of, of things being said is, is yeah, the, the subtext is, uh, yeah. pretty clear. Um, so what, so that was Google, Google of, effectively done that now and i'm assuming that means that every time if you google a if you look at your google news feed or if you go to google a search result if something pops up there must be something in the algorithm which assigns a certain uh commercial like you know a, a, a fee that goes back to the media companies for that i'm assuming um it, it's not really clear how they will attract this do you know what i mean yeah mm. but they're a tech giant i'm sure they can work it out now Facebook. They they do the opposite all the time, by the way, where it's like <laughs> you pay us and we'll prioritize your link and they can work yeah. that system out completely perfectly. So I'm sure they won't have any problem doing it in reverse. I'm sure there should be no hiccups whatsoever. Not at all. Um, so Facebook were kind of a bit quieter than Google on the subject for, for many weeks and months. I mean, there were a couple of things that were popping up, but it wasn't like they weren't really Certainly they large. didn't run anywhere near as aggressive of a, of a campaign against the code. Like it seemed like Facebook, mm. at least to my mind, as a, as a casual observer, was someone uh, was a company that was um, uh, 
reticent to just adopt the code, but like um, wasn't coming out swinging like Google. Uh, oh. And then we found out this week that Facebook killed the hostage. They said, <laughs> um, "Yeah, <laughs> uh, not not only uh, are we not willing to negotiate, um, but you know the the Stark boys are both going to cop it as a result." So, um, yeah. Well, was was they so they, the the code passed the lower house of the Australian Parliament. Mm. But the funny thing was that some people said was that they maybe they didn't understand that it's just the lower house and that it's not the Senate. Although you could probably argue that they've got control of the Senate, so and it's a bipartisan code, so mm. whatever. It's also yeah. that, and there's Australian arms of Facebook. It's not like they're completely ignorant to what's going on yeah. here. I, I, I would wager to say that it was a, it was a shot over the bow. It was a warning shot. You mm. go, okay, this is what you're going to do. Like, this is us yeah. flexing to say, hey, if you actually pass this, we will fuck your shit. <laughs> like, well, yeah, this is them being like, oh, okay, you want to see what it's like if uh, if we just pull out? All that sort of stuff. If we just disappear, that, that's what it's going to be like. And it was a massive dick swing, mm. which uh, the thing that I that struck me was I would have thought out of, if you, to, you know, actually, no, not if you told me. We had we had told me, mm-hmm. uh, bad sentence, uh, that, you know, this is Google and Facebook who we're dealing with. Mm. If either of them was in a position to make the big dick swing, to mm. be like, oh, you want to try and do this? Well, this is what happens when we turn off the tap and just watch the chaos unfold and expect <laughs> us all to be like, we're so sorry, we didn't we didn't mean to mess with you, please come back. It'd be Google. Mm. If Google just turned everything off, everyone's lives would implode. Uh, upon reflection, but everyone, it, it mm-hmm. kind of makes sense, though, because like news sharing is really not the thing that makes Facebook go. Um, like it, it is, I guess, an important part of what people do on Facebook, and it's an important part of engagement for a particular minority sect of their audience here in Australia. But um, Facebook can make a shitload of money just fine without having news on its website, yes. mm. uh, and so that in it's uh, the odds Financial, were stacked. So, yeah. sort of, yeah, the fiscal odds were were sort of stacked against the Australian government in this instance. Like mm. um, uh, the the thing that I'm curious about like is the, the 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 outrage seems to be directed mainly towards the government and not to facebook online yeah. from what i can see a really it's been a really interesting facet of the last couple of days which which i mean is fine i think they're both wrong like it's it's one of those unusual mm. news stories that i have where i'm like there is no good guy and a bad guy like they're both bad guys <laughs> Oh, and I hope everyone every, involved here is awful i hope everyone in this story loses and like full disclosure i am a Facebook shareholder. I I own Facebook shares and they've done well uh, over the couple of years that I've had them. So like the reason that I own Facebook shares is because I'm convinced of Mark Zuckerberg's ability to be completely, a completely bloodless profit making machine at all times. So I guess in retrospect, it isn't surprising that they shot the hostage, but like yeah. clearly our government officials were taken by surprise. Josh, Fre- There's a press conference where Josh Frydenberg is just kind of like a deer in the headlights, kind of freaking out, just go, oh, yeah, you know, it's obviously, you know, it's not what we expected, but, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, I'm surprised, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked, I'm upset. Uh, and he was just kind of like freaking out. Um, and then Scott uh, Morrison put a big uh, statement out on Facebook, uh, <laughs> you know, decrying the whole thing. Um, well, and that's an interesting part as well. Yeah. Like when we talk about how heavy handed this was, like this wasn't so much a calculated move with a scalpel where they just took a sledgehammer to the servers and just yeah. it, fucked it was, the whole system. It was less surgery and more shotgun to the face. <laughs> yeah. And then it, as well as news, it blocked like, yeah, the Bureau of Meteorology and like people's small businesses, our podcast page, right. uh, like Batuta Advocate, all that sort mm. of stuff. Um, an interesting part that pe- people grabbed onto was that clearly they there was a bit of thought in it in that they didn't want to suddenly just take down elected officials. Mm. Like mm. there were so many like, you know, so Scott Morrison could still post what he did. And uh, I think, for example, uh, the Victorian premier here, Dan Andrews page is still up and viewable and functioning. However, Michael O'Brien's isn't. Mm. Yeah. So it was just interesting to be like the people who are in power who might need to be disseminating information mm-hmm. were untouched, but their opposition leaders weren't. So the amount of times people were like, oh, so they left dictator Dan up, but they took down mm. the liberal guy. This is bias. And same with them. Um, I think uh, the premier fairness. of the BUA 
A and the opposition leader. Opposition leader's gone. WA guy's still there. They're being like, they're fucking, they're interfering in our elections again. In, in all fairness, <laughs> Facebook officials, much like the majority of the Australian populace, do not know who Michael O'Brien is. So Correct. just got caught I up with all the other I Michaels. did look him up before the show so I could bring up this story because I had forgotten his name. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, um, it, it's funny. It's Greens members and other, like it was sort of, there were a number hmm. of people that were, or politicians that were blocked for a time yeah. being. I think then they got a ticket, a support ticket and they've unblocked them since. It's really interesting because the Australian government for many years has been using Facebook as a way of, there have been small business, like um, small grants given out to various councils and businesses and and things like that by the Australian government over the years for the express purpose of getting people on Facebook, for mm. getting businesses on Facebook to sort of drag things into the 21st century economy-wise and Facebook mm. was seen as a useful part of that by the government. So it's really interesting to see the government at odds with them now when we've spent millions of taxpayer dollars trying to get everyone on Facebook and then yeah. Facebook says, fuck yous. Um uh, you know, go suck on some eggs, um, how that's going to play out. But uh, mm. it, it really is like, it, it just sh- it's a fundamental misstep to entrust yeah. any information of any importance to a private company who gives it to you for free. Um, like the like at the end of the day, they are a free, it is a, it is a company. They are entitled to have whomever they want or don't want on their platform at any given time. They can kick mm. you off. They have kicked you off. This is not the first time that Facebook's done stuff like this, um, you know, sort of arbitrarily restricted things. So I think to me, it's just like the final nail in the coffin to be like, okay, we cannot, we can't trust these guys anymore. Mm. We, can, we can't trust them. We can't trust that there's anything that they, they run. We cannot trust to be there for us tomorrow. So we need to do it ourselves. You need to collect email lists. You need to run yeah. your own website. You need to do all this sort of shit because if the product is free, newsflash it's not free you are the product you know and i know that's something we've said before but like it just to me it, it really reiterates it in a way that's very final mm. for me at least the the um the the speaking of the outrage before and that sort of you know who are the good guys i mean a lot of it seems to have been that it's and it's tied in i think with the kevin rudd anti murdoch mm. petition that's happening at the same time and certainly like adam bant and a few other uh sort of left-wing politicians because this bill's got bipartisan support they got shit canned for this because mm. um allegedly according to well not allegedly it's pretty obvious this is the result the reason why this bill exists is because it's been at the behest of probably murdoch yeah. for the best R- part of 10 years rupert murdoch needs to find a way to make his business model make sense in the 21st century yeah. you know, like it really is as simple as mm. that um and so a lot of people have just gone, well, the only reason why this bill exists in the first place is because the, the Liberals are trying to rush this in and all this kind of stuff. And to be fair, like, yeah, there's part of that. Yeah, there's Don't a bit forget, of that. Don't forget, though, that, like, the government asked the ACCC, which is an arm's-length organisation, to look at it, and this is what the ACCC came up with. Mm. Look, to be fair to those people, this code isn't great. It's mm. not particularly specific. It's is a way of doing things when there are other ways that would have been simpler, such as taxing certain companies in a particular way. Mm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they, they hear that being like, you could tax companies in a certain way. They're like, sorry, um, <clears throat> you must be new here. Uh, we, we are the, uh, we're the LNP government. Uh, we don't, we don't tax people unless they're poor. <laughs> anyway, go on. We, you can have a do over. So yeah, a code sounds good. Uh, yeah, so this is this is much more, I think, in line with that liberal ideology of like, oh well, they, they, the market can sort itself out, right? Um, so yeah, uh, I, it's been really interesting watching on various social media platforms comments on uh, stories in, in Google or whatever else of, of people just being like, this is you know, this is what you get, Australian government. It's sort of mm. backfired on them, but. And yeah, the other argument has been that there's been no real methodology set out as to how this will actually benefit journalism. It's just about getting money to the media company and there's no other... And then uh, step three, oh, yeah. well-funded Prof- journalism. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so there, not, and there's all yeah. those issues as well. Yeah, you're right, Adam. It's very much like, and the second part of my you must be new here analogy would be, so what else do you have? They're like, oh, I have some vague scattershot legislation that you'll rush through in time for Christmas. Hey, now you're talking my language. <laughs> 
and this is where it gets a bit complicated. And Facebook, I find the concept of the monetary, the way it'll work monetarily for Google, I, I get that. Mm. The Facebook aspect, I don't understand how the government expects to be like how they expect funds to flow to media companies. Mm. And part of it is because in the last two days I've forgotten, because there's been no news, I've forgotten how it works. <laughs> but second part of it is, is that um, Facebook is a social media site. Google is a search engine. They are different. Mm. They do very different things, yeah. So the concept, and this is where my head... And <laughs> Unless you're that, grandma looking for cake recipes and unless you just post looking. a status update saying like cake recipes, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so it literally says in the legislation that this will apply to the Facebook news feed, which includes Facebook groups and Facebook pages, and the Facebook news tab if and when it's released in Australia, which is I think what George was referring to possibly mm. before. Um, so what that means is, so what, 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 is your, what is your Facebook news feed? Your Facebook news feed is stuff that's popping up that's from things that you have a vested interest in. The way you indicate oh, pa you pages have a that you've interest. liked or, or people yeah, that you're page, friends with. Pages, friends, all that. Friends, sort of stuff. pages yeah. you've liked. You have to have an input that is uh, directed. It's not as subtle as Google. Google, like you'll Google a few things and Google will just work out what you like. Whereas so, Facebook, I mean, Facebook, I Facebook does do that to a degree based on previous does. things that you've liked and done. It'll suggest things for you and suggest yeah. pages and that sort of stuff as well. But in concert with direct uh what do you call it du not direct action but but there is a, a user input that is you're conscious of right sure. so in mm. combination with a conscious input it is also working out what you're looking at and what you're not looking at instagram is very good at that mm. um same algorithm really is what facebook use because they're mm. by the same people yep no, um, same so the concept this is where i can't wrap my head around how they will make this work and i'm sure they'd be able to figure it out but the concept being i like abc uh, an ABC article pops up on my thing because I've liked them. Does that therefore mean... And then the ABC has deliberately posted on Facebook and probably paid Facebook to boost that post. So does that therefore mean that Facebook then has to pay money back to the ABC because I've clicked on that link and it's appeared on my news feed? Well, see, I think that's where you, uh, probably the point of the legislation would be more they might reinstate your ability to do that. Like they've posted their link and you've clicked it to go to it. It's probably more if Facebook wants to implement or re-implement this whole thing of, oh, well, when they post the story, it summarizes the headline and has mm. like the first couple pars. If that's mm. like how the, the UI is set up, then Facebook should be paying ABC for that content. But, so really Facebook so, could yeah, just, that's the thing. Facebook way they should just decide. Yeah, Facebook will just have to decide if they're like, oh, well, if we want to have that feature, we have to pay the ABC or the Guardian or whoever for their content. Or if we don't like that, well, I guess, cool. Uh, we just have to have Facebook set up in a way where to, in order to get the news, people have to click the links and then they get their traffic and Bob's your uncle. I, I think the thing yeah. that's really abundantly clear to me as a result of going through this process is how little Australian lawmakers really understand about the internet. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. No <laughs> oh, idea. Yeah. I, I very much doubt that, like, we, we can talk about, you know, uh, you know, CPM and, you know, cl clicks per, per mil and, and, you know, the value of how the advertising model works on Facebook and, like, we have a native understanding of all this sort of stuff. But I very much doubt Bob Catter is sitting there with his 500-gallon hat and has any fucking clue. Like, if he listened to that podcast, we may as well be speaking fucking Swahili because there's no way that he would understand anything yeah. that we just said. So, th but these mm. are the people that are also drafting and input, having well, input on the legislation. So how the ACCC well... is, is the one that... Are that are okay, drafting they, they drafted the, the, the code, have to... but then, then they're making amendments and making the argument for it and as to whether it's a good idea and all that sort of... They're, they're advocating it to the public. So yes. um, are they doing so with any real understanding? To me, it seems like pretty much not. And I think like yep. even the fact that, you know, people like Senator Sarah Hansen-Young has, has gotten behind it, who's a member of the Greens. And I kind of feel like, I don't know, this doesn't feel like an effort to enrich... Rupert Murdoch doesn't necessarily feel like a very greensy type thing to do. I just, I don't know. I feel like I expected a little bit more nuance, a little bit. Mm. Yeah. A little bit more legwork from, from people I sort of trusted and thought were a little bit more switched on to this sort of stuff, you know, Penny Wong and, and, and various other sort of, um, you know, senators and, uh, and mm. members of parliament on the, on the sort of left-hand side of things. Um, but 
it, it just it really just says to me that we we have a political culture that fundamentally doesn't really does not understand the area that been, they're trying to legislate. That's been Facebook's. That's what Zuckerberg has literally said. You fundamentally don't understand our business model. Mm. Um, I mean, that could be just you know rhetoric. Sen- Google, Google said the same thing. But- Senator, <laughs> we, we sell ads. <laughs> Um, and it's funny because, like, same thing. Uh, this Facebook news feed includes Facebook groups and Facebook pages. So if you're in a group of, like, like we are, like for our preparation, if, if mm. you're sharing articles, like, it, that's not algorithmically driven. If I'm sharing something in a group, yep. I'm the one doing that. I am the user of that channel. It's not mm. the algorithm hasn't decided that that's going to show up on someone's news feed, although it does to an extent. In, it depends uh, how many people there are in the group, right? In our right. private Facebook pay, uh, group, group, not our page, where it's sharing between just you, me, and Tom, yeah. then all members of the group are going to see it. But if it's a situation yeah. where you've got a group of like 20, thousand people members or something, or anti-vaxxers yeah. that have got 10,000 members, then yeah, everything that goes through that is going to be algorithmized to some degree to, to push relevant posts up and push how do they dumb, detect, bad like, stuff down. Like it's, it, how know, do they detect what's what, what the algorithm is actually... I don't know. I assume it's oh. key keywords and things like it. Uh, I, I guess they probably this feels did really unclear. Into news organizations, so things that had Guardian, ABC, Herald Sun, mm. that like, but and then, but they'd have to be broader than that. So I think there was also things like .gov kind of stuff was probably yeah. caught up in it. Like, yeah, you just have to like cast the net as wide as they could. With like, how do you and how do you as a lawyer like how do you work out a commercial arrangement based on that? Like, and every time they update the algorithm, they have to give notice. Is, and this is part of the code that they have to yeah. give notice. But mm. does that therefore mean if you update the algorithm, you then have to work out a new contractual arrangement with how you're going to pay these people? I guess it would depend what the algorithmic mm. change is. Oh, it like, just feels uh, really yeah. unclear. Like, it just feels really like not. Mm. Well thought through. But I don't again, know. I, I feel as though you could have a good faith dis- if Facebook was to come around and have a good faith discussion about the complexities and what they can do and what they can't do, especially revealing changes to the algorithm in advance. That seems to me like an absolute non-starter for tech industry stuff. Um, but if there was a good faith discussion to be had, I'd be interested in hearing their perspective. But what they've done is they've said next to nothing for six months, twelve months. And then just turned around and, as I said, shot the hostage. So it doesn't seem like it's an argument that's being made in good faith. Um, mm. So yeah, I, I just don't. I just have no trust whatsoever left in Facebook at this stage. This is a company that uses and abuses people da- people's data for for their own personal profit. Like that. That is the business model: is advertising based on your personal data, and yeah. it just. So the flip side is though I've actually really enjoyed the news feed at the moment because there isn't a lot of that shit. It's just, which is what we do, to be fair. But like, <laughs> it's, it, it is just updates from either organisations or people that I'm interested in. Yep. And it feels a bit more like what Facebook used to be about. Mm. Well, and that's why people like it. Yes. Right? Although, funnily enough, uh, the kinds of things that weren't affected by this, uh, as George says, shooting the hostage, mm. um, things like anti-vaxxer pages. Mm. Uh, oh, none of that shit has been stopped or blocked. So it's kind of like, yeah, that news isn't okay. Satire about the news doesn't seem to be okay. I know the Batuta's gone, but the Chaser is still up. Yeah, Interesting. So I, I think but Batuta then, was gone briefly, but then it was back. They were, oh, asking, back. they were asking for people to follow, to subscribe to their mailing list and all that sort of stuff on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, but Batuta Advocates, like The Onion, for those who don't know, it's yeah. a satirical newspaper. Um, but, like, hitting all those kind of things, but, of course, misinformation and, like, fake mm. news and all that sort of stuff apparently didn't make the cut to be yeah. blocked. So I had a friend of mine say... Jokes about real news, that's not okay. But a, fake news, oh yeah, why not? I had a friend of mine say to me, well, then then everyone will know that if it's on Facebook, then it's not it's real bullshit. news, right? And I was like, oh, sweet, sweet, optimistic, <laughs> optimistic, Ben. So sweet, so kind, so innocent. Um, Man, that's... No, because how that's... How great would that be? <laughs> yeah, but, but what was happening, and, and, and it goes to, to some uh, into some detail in this uh, ABC article, it says, Facebook news ban sees anti-vaccine misinformation pages unaffected and posting in, quote, information vacuum. And essentially what happened was um, people that were following these anti-vaccine 
pages and these were the only quote unquote they said you're the only news source that it, that's still available like what they did yeah. was they just then transferred the um i guess the faith that they had in institutional journalism and just like redirected it to whatever was left standing on facebook and so you know um far right figure uh, avi yemeni who's previously been banned from facebook for hate speech um is uh is running a quote news and media website and that's that's still up and running so did he yeah, not get banned right. out of that and previously been banned for, for other stuff but, but he's, did, he, did he not get blocked as a part he didn't of that. get blocked as part of this nah. no. he's more news than we are yeah exactly right <laughs> so yeah. another co- uh, so one of the comments reads how am i able to see this post weren't all news and media posts banned right so that's what everyone was so so it's what it's doing is saying it's the presupposition there is that this is news and media though. Like, so, so this is equally as valid as the Sydney morning Herald or, uh, you know, the ABC or any other trusted news source. Um, so it's not, Mm. it's, I don't think it's quite having the intended effect where people are going, okay, well, if all news is gone, then everything that remains must be bullshit. They're just saying, Oh, this news, this, that confirms my biases about anti-vaccine is, is the only thing left. It's like maybe it's a conspiracy with Facebook. It's like, oh, they approve of this news, so that mm. must mean it's legit. They left it up, right. so it must be the good shit. And this is a really interesting. This is probably a larger argument, but for the last well oh, four years since Trump, basically, there's been this argument of like, how far should Facebook go to limit misinformation to, and to curate been, views? Yeah, yeah, and Facebook have been really like, oh well, we can't do too much because well, initially they were like, oh, because because uh, free speech and everything else, and then they sort of changed their tune. It's been like, no, we're going to do do our best to get rid of misinformation and because you know hold in front of the Senate and everything else in the US. Um, and there's a lot of people that are like, well, this it's it's free speech. You can't censor free speech. You know, I should be able to say whatever I want on Facebook. Avi Yemeni is an example, or you know, fucking um, whoever else. Alex Jones should be able to use mm. Facebook if they want because it's, it's it's a town hall. It's the replacement for the town hall. We should all be able to yell into the echo chamber. Mm-hmm. So basically, I guess what's been happening, same thing with Twitter, is that over the last like two or three years, they've been banning selectively people mm. for uh, breaching their community guidelines. But the only reason how reason how like you, you get to be noticed if you're breaching it as if someone reports you. Mm. So I don't know. It just sort of feels like. And Facebook's gone on a charm offensive lately. I've been hearing a lot of ads on podcasts saying, oh, we've tripled our, the size of our internal like a uh, security team and this, this and that. And we want a, uh, you know, a code that's fair on everyone and allows you to transport your data. Aren't we good? Facebook's the best, isn't it? Um, you know, so they're, they're definitely. They're trying to have it both ways. They're trying to have it like, they're going to want to ban all news media and also be like, we're, res- we're being responsible about like it's, misinformation. It's not and- about Australia. At the end of the day, this whole news bargaining code and all this sort of shit, Facebook actually doesn't give a shit about Australia. It's about making sure that we- they don't set a precedent here that mm. will then cost them abroad. Because if other countries mm. start putting together similar codes, it's going to erode their their um, their financial base yeah. altogether, right? So It's really interesting because one of the first things Scott Morrison did was call Modi uh, from India. Mm. 30% of Facebook's users are in India. Yeah. And Mo- Modi was apparently really interested in a lot of the stuff mm, that Scott Morrison go. was talking about. <laughs> so, you know, I think the government is able to exert pressure back. Like, it's not like they can't do anything about it. it, it definitely, if they get other governments on board, there's scope here for Facebook and Google to be, you know, pushed into the water, so to speak. Facebook knows that they're in trouble. They, they, Like their last, I think it was last quarter uh, of last year, they had their first quarter of negative growth in Facebook's history. So for a constantly scaling up tech company, uh, this is not a, um, this is not a uh, livable, uh, it's not a strategy that they can live with. This is why mm. they've had the situation where in a lot of third world countries, Facebook comes um default with your phone the way people access the internet for the first time in a lot of poor countries is via a smartphone Myanmar, right? yeah Myanmar, perfect example so um the facebook comes bundled with the phone in some instances there's even no data charges for facebook on the on the phone so you might have a plan that's like 30 megabytes a month because that's all you can afford but facebook facebook you can use unlimited because this is how badly facebook wants to acquire new customers um but the problem is, is that for those people, then Facebook becomes the internet. And if all that's living on 
the internet, as far as you can access it, is lies and conspiracy theory horseshit, that's going to lead to a lot more episodes of things like we saw with the Rohingya in Myanmar, where basically Facebook became this wretched hive of scum and villainy, um, where people were posting a bunch of, you know, dog shit and people were getting killed over the stuff that was happening on Facebook. Yeah. Mm. Um sort of amplifies it becomes ampl- an echo chamber. All of the things that have been bad about Facebook will now get worse if if actual news is not allowed to proliferate. Yeah. So I mean, you could argue it's a complicated thing to work out, but they're also a billion dollar tech company and should be able to work it out. So mm, that's this yeah. what happens. If you become the internet, you this is the responsibility that you're now saddled with. Yep. Um uh, interestingly, um, so from this ABC article, on a second page of more than 20,000 members, I like that, that I mentioned the name of the page, um, also with a history of posting anti-vaccine information, a post celebrates that the government, quote, won't be able to distribute their COVID-19 fear-mongering and propaganda to the Australian public. A Queensland University of Technology analysis has found, quote, publishers of low or dubious credibility have remained unaffected by the ban. So it's it's really opening up to, you know, people like Craig Kelly and George Christensen who have sprouted a bunch of conspiracy theory horseshit on their Facebook pages, famously, as we've talked about, are just now going to have wide... It's just going to be open slather for them. I don't see how this can mm. be good. Well, uh, yeah. I was gonna, well, in ways that it can be good for bad people, because uh, we've been talking about this issue for about 40 minutes now, mm-hmm. but there's uh, some other stuff that happened this week. And what a convenient week for some people uh, mm-hmm. it, it has been... Uh, for uh, a large portion of maybe the public to not be able to uh, disseminate news and Mm. uh, not familiar with other avenues. Uh, Scott Morrison Mm. has uh, been dealing uh, with a lot of things this week uh, around some uh, allegations that came out uh, from now two people. Mm. Um, I think the the, the second allegation is relatively recent. Um, of uh, women who uh, were allegedly uh, raped by the same person uh, who used to work for the government. So uh, a Liberal, one a liberal Party them. staffer. Yes, yes, yeah, Liberal Party staffer. Um, and the, you, you the know first allegation bad... <laughs> occurring in Parliament House uh, in the lead-up to the last election. Uh, yeah. it's, it's a horrific story. You, you know that um, you're, you, like Scott Morrison must know that he's having a bad week when a story about a covered-up rape at Parliament House comes out and he goes, oh, thank Christ. We really need to get some attention <laughs> off this Facebook thing. This is really hurting mm. us. Yeah, what, what was she? Yeah, she raped. Yeah, that's that's obviously awful. But I can spend a lot of time in front of the cameras not talking about Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Like, oh, and spend time in front of the cameras he did um, because, <laughs> yeah, he's been fielding a lot of questions about it because it's now become, as well as, you know, uh, issues of around the culture in Parliament House, as we've talked about previously mm. when Four Corners did their story on uh, the attorney general do good journalism yeah it's it's (laughs) crazy right um and all those sorts of like culture discussions around it's become a huge thing of did the prime minister know like did his department know when did they know all these sorts of things uh scott morrison claims that he personally was unaware of it until uh the friday before the monday that the news broke Mm. Like, you know, so you heard about it on the weekend. That's uh, the claim. I wasn't aware of it in the two years since it happened. Mm. That's the claim. Um, but just the, <laughs> the way that the Liberal Party uh, and the, the, the government handled uh, the first woman's situation was horrific mm-hmm. um, because, uh, like, not to get into too many of the really awful details, but um, uh, she was uh, allegedly raped in the office of a minister um, and when the the situation was brought to light at the time, they brought her in to have a discussion about it in that same office, which is deplorable. That's, yeah, <laughs> like to to just say, yeah, let's let's have our very uh, uncomfortable discussion about your rape at the scene of the crime. Mm. Um, and yeah, she felt a lot of pressure to sort of not go ahead with. Uh, a police inquiry and all that sort of stuff around for fear of her job. Uh, she swapped apartments. Um, I believe she's no longer working in the government now. So no. apparently um, the guy was fired for a quote-unquote security breach because you're not supposed to bring people back to Parliament House at all hours of the night, even if you are a Liberal staffer. So apparently that is what he was fired over. And then, so Linda Reynolds, the 
woman who was this woman's yeah. boss. Uh, um, yeah, the, the, the yeah, MP. Who is, yeah, who is now the defense minister. Um, said, you know, it, she apologized, but it was kind of this non apology apology, which I fucking hate, where it's like, we, I did everything I thought possible to make sure that she felt supported and encouraged her to do whatever she felt she needed to do. Um, and it's like, well, but obviously you didn't because that's why we're having this conversation. Like you can't just go, well, my opinion mm. of it was I was very supportive when the person who was the survivor of the crime says I was highly pressured not to, to bring this to the attention of the police and have a proper investigation. There was also some fucking weirdness about like security guards and like getting a steam cleaner in on the weekend to like clean up, like essentially basically destroy evidence of the fucking crime scene, yeah, which is what and, it was. Yeah, like CCTV footage that she wasn't allowed access to. There, there were things about the assault that she only learned this past week yes. by bringing it up. Mm. Like it, that's fucked. It, yeah. It's so and, incredibly and, fucked. And what's it called? I don't know if you guys know the term for this, but there's something that's like when the government, when something happens in a government and they don't want the information to get out about it, they sort of, they, to cover out. they cover out. They, yeah, they don't let a, it be covered. Cover. They sort of cover it up as to what actually happened. I don't know what the term for that is, but I don't know. Maybe you guys know. Cover uh, and I. Uh, that's a cover up. It's a cover up. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a cover up. Um, um, and that's yeah. and that's been sort of the big thing is because of the timing of it. So the the alleged rape rape happened in March. The election was in May. And that was 2019. And this is obviously the same election, which was the unwinnable election, which they somehow won. Um, you've got to, like, whatever Scott Morrison says, there are machinations within the Liberal Party that were suppressing this, whichever oh, way. Of course. And, mm. and even if it was a case where certain ministers and certain staffers had information about this and didn't pass it up to Scott Morrison for, like, plausible deniability, right? Like, we're deliberately going to keep you out of the loop on this so yeah. you, so we can say you didn't know about it if it ever comes out, which is maybe what happened. Um, but I, I am of the impression there was an allegation that Brittany Higgins made, this is the, the Liberal staffer who, who's making these allegations, um, that, uh, you know, like members of staff uh, like a particular, she named a particular member of staff from Scott mm. Morrison's office that reached out to her. And there's a record of this like, like te- a, a te- text oh, message. And, yeah, there's yeah. like records of these conversations. So it's not credible to me to say that one of your senior staffers knew about this and didn't pass it on. Like if he didn't, that's extreme yeah. neglect and he should be fired yeah. for that. And, you know, but all the more likely scenario is, is they passed on the information with the idea of saying, okay, well, we could say the prime minister never knew directly about it because, you know, we haven't acknowledged it sort of publicly. It's not recorded mm. in any, yeah. any way. But like Julie Bishop, who Brittany Higgins then proceeded to work for, another female minister after Wasn't this Wasn't it Cash? Uh, was it Michaelia Cash? It might I be Michaelia Cash. Michaelia Cash's department. Yeah, Bishop had left by that point. Sorry, yes, Michaelia Cash. was on the way out. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking of angry white ladies. Um, <laughs> Michaelia Cash was the one who... Um, uh, who gave her a call the night that the allegations about Christian Porter came out uh, uh, to say, just to like, quote unquote, check, check, in. check in. And it's just like, so, so why would you be calling to check in if you didn't know what had happened? Like, there's just a lot of things that are documented mm. that don't fucking mm. add up with the government story about all of this. And we learned as of yesterday that, as you mentioned earlier, Tom, this um, liberal staffer who is as yet unnamed, as far as I'm aware, who... Uh, is alleged to have committed this assault, um, has been uh, identified by another Liberal Party staffer as having been uh, having done something similar to them as well. So yes, what we seems. have now yeah. is a serial rapist <laughs> roaming the halls of Parliament. <laughs> like, it really does not get more... Like, if you, ever you needed evidence that the LNP has a problem with the culture there and how they handle women, yeah. like... This this is it. Like the Christian Porter allegations that he was having sex with, you know, female subordinates and that there was a weird power dynamic and maybe it was okay, maybe it wasn't okay. Like all that, you know, all of that pales in, into insignificance against literal allegations of serial rape. Um, mm. And this is, if there was a proper federal police, AFP, Australian Federal Police investigation into these incidents when they mm. occurred, as there should have been, then maybe that the, this this other woman would have um 
wouldn't have had to fall victim to the same thing again. Yeah. It seems and- like Parliament House is the only workplace in the country where you can get away with rape. Like It was interesting that um, Reynolds in the Senate, uh, she's a senator, was asked directly, what was the, the termination situation with this alleged rapist? Mm. And she declined. To, she got really emotional. Although you're watching the footage, you can't. This is where it gets a bit funny. You, you're looking, watching the footage. You're like, is she actually upset, or is she or just trying to get out of asking the question? Because hey, she literally turns around and goes, "I can't answer these questions right now. Can I take them on notice? I'm just too upset. Yeah, too upset about losing my job. <laughs> I mean, for, for, for mishandling this terrible. fucking crisis. Hey, Linda, I've got a little. I've got a little mug here for you. It's got. It's got a. It's a cup of concrete, and maybe you can drink that and harden the fuck up. Just an idea. I mean, in fairness, you can't necessarily just divulge people's employment information in Parliament unless there's like probably things in place for it. But the- when, when rape is involved, I think right. maybe we should make an exception. Well, allegedly, this guy is now working for a lobbyist firm and he's doing quite well. Great. So, oh, as long as he keeps failing upwards, fantastic. Great. Oh, so then nothing no, matters? Nothing matters. Brilliant. There was also an allegation this week uh, where at least one media outlet was approached and received backgrounding, which is where based backgrounding is like, where they don't say anything on the record, but it's all sort of... Yeah, you have off the record conversations, but it gives you more context to be pursuing something you can hopefully get on the record. Mm. So they were, they were trying to background against Higgins, who's uh, the, the victim, um, her current partner, because apparently he has an axe to grind because he's also a former liberal staffer. Mm. Now... Not every one media outlet reported that, but if that's what they are doing, like the, the, it's the same thing with Facebook and Google. The, the media, the the LNP media machine, is just like this its own fucking spin machine. Like it, it mm. is just out of control. Like, mm. it's, and then there's also been a lot of commentary around Scott Morrison's language in response to this. I was going to say, can yeah. we talk about the one sort of semi-funny aspect of this story, which is how old Skinny. Scotty from marketing handled it? Yes. Yeah, Tom, do you um, want to give us the example? <laughs> uh, yes, well, because I don't know if I... I don't think I actually have the quote here in front of me. Um, but essentially, Scott Morrison, one of his press conferences, talking about, you know, how, how serious this issue is and, and the, you know, that how awful it is and blah, blah, blah. And then he thought he'd throw in sort of a oh yeah you know talk to them uh, you know let's be a, let's humanize scotty humanize yourself scotty back yourself um <laughs> throwing something out there that he was talking to his wife jenny the night before and said that uh he had to think about this uh uh as a father first rather than as the prime minister and what would he want to happen if it was one of his girls who jenny was had the, a way of clarifying it. yeah jenny had a way of clarifying it for I, I cannot stand this dumb fucking trope that we seem to regress to anytime a man in a position of power is asked to exercise some fucking empathy around a human female and what's happened to them, them only being able to do so in the context yeah. of them having a daughter. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I it's so, maybe we should have uh, a prime minister that just fucking understands that rape is bad. Maybe, yeah, maybe, the maybe thing, start there. The and thing then that it could, yeah. Well, the thing that occurred to me about it when he said it, like, and seeing everyone saying exactly what you were saying there, George, of like, hey, it, like, that shouldn't fucking matter, which is what the rest of that thought should be. But everyone just stops at sort of like they just they just think, well, you know, because you think like, oh, like, you know, you might not have daughters, you know, a sister or, or your wife or a, a friend or whomever. You think like, what if it was that? What if I knew the person? The, the very least, you think, what if I knew the victim? I would want to do like, you know, I would want like justice to be hard and thorough and I would be furious and all these sorts of things. And then the rest of that thought is, yeah, well, and they're someone's, they're significant to someone on that level. So it shouldn't matter whether it's me that's the person. I should just care about what happens to to women, whether or regardless of my relationship to them. That's the rest of the thought. But everyone just gets to the, yeah, yeah, all right, no, no. Well, what if it was my daughter? Yeah, yep. Yeah, I'd be furious. So, yeah, that's good. Stop. Like, got other things to focus on. It's like, no, no, finish the sentence. No, no, I, 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 get there. I got to play around with a with a vial of the Pfizer vaccine looking like the world's <laughs> most patriotic tuck shop lady. Oh, that, God. That, that, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm vaccinated, by the way. <laughs> Is he the first one to get vaccinated? 
Um, he, uh, Scott Morrison, yeah. So Scott Morrison, the Prime Minister, um, was one of the per- first people. So that happened today, allegedly. I didn't see it. Um, but um, I was like, I hope this is on camera because otherwise there is no fucking utility in Scott Morrison being one of the first people vaccinated if the whole point isn't to show the public like, hey, the Prime Minister's getting the vaccine. It's safe. It you is should on, get it too. It is on camera. Okay, There's good. Because if he just got like it backstage, that. I'd be real fucking mad. Yeah, no, no. It is on camera. But there was also him with, I assume, Adam, what you're referring to as the old woman who was with him. I think the first woman, the first person to get the vaccine in Australia. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think she was a, 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 ve- a veteran, I think. She was an old, um, old, old lady. Yeah, yeah, but like one of the first, the first person to get it, and they're sitting next to each other, and you know, Scomo, ever the marketing guy, he wants a photo op. Was all like, you know, let's do like, you know, peace kind of fingers symbol, like you know, V for vaccine or whatever. And she kind of did it, but she did it like the other way around, like just flipping the flipping the bird oh, Errol. <laughs> at, Errol. at both like scomo and the cameras and, and someone i can't remember who said this on twitter but it was like that's the most australian thing ever getting the vaccine next to the prime minister and then flipping him off like brilliant uh, it's such a, like it is such a scomo gaff as well like oh, you know what i mean like the, the handshake all, all over again yeah, yeah. Like, such a scomo gaff i don't yeah. know i mean the thing that with the with the back to the the, the rape um <laughs> The, <laughs> there was a much better way for you to say that, but carry on. Uh, I was having a chat with... <laughs> Jesus Christ. With, with Elle about it. Um, Elle is and your the, the, significant uh, other. Yeah. And we were just discussing why why he said that. I was like, is that something he's just riffed, um, you know, off the cuff, or is it something that someone's fed him? But what is evident... And I think she's been doing some some listening to podcasts and stuff about it as well. Is that that's a response, as Tom said, that that comes out quite a lot mm. as a father. It's almost like it's, it's it was the standard response from ten years ago, twenty years ago, that you default to no, if no, you're no, trying. Look, to- I get it. I'm a dad, so therefore it's the same thing. I basically so- get it. <laughs> Is it a question of that's literally him just thinking through the process and that's where he's at? Or is it like, this is me putting spin on it again because this is how I know how to spin things? I, I, or, I honestly or, don't or think it was... Did he literally have a conversation with Jenny and yeah. Jenny literally said that? And I'm, I'm sure all, all of that is accurate. But, yeah. but the fact is, is like in 2021, that's such a fucking sophomoric analysis of like mm. how sexual assaults happen and how we should think about it and feel like we should just begin with having a prime minister that doesn't need mm. to these kind of very basic examples to understand human empathy. Like we should just, yeah, we should start from a basis of having a different person in there who understands that these things are bad and we, and they don't need to be told, you know, like we shouldn't need as a, you know, say for example, I have a daughter or, you know, I, my wife who's in the workplace, I shouldn't need to be reliant on her superiors having daughters for them to understand basic empathy. (laughs) Yeah. And that's what I mean. That's why the thought has to go to the end of Mm. you're asking a what if question. So you can then apply it to the situation where you do not have a daughter. Yeah. And mm. then you sh- that means you should just care. That's like, like I actually and you should just care. That's it. You just have to care. I don't give a shit because I have sons. So fuck yeah. them. <laughs> oh yeah, that was some of the best headlines I saw of like, you know, men with sons just <laughs> unable to fathom why <laughs> rape is bad. Like the, I mean the and, and that had a good it. With it. Yeah, and that is just what his response boils down to because he didn't follow yeah. it to its conclusion. <laughs> now in fairness, in terms of actions, they have I think that what they're gonna do now is there's gonna be a a process set up through a, a lecturer at one of the universities. She's going to come in and set up, I think, uh, an arm's length complaints handling process to try and prevent things like this happening in the future. Yeah, they're going to have a royal commission that they can that they can ignore no, all the recommendations no royal, for. That'd be a, that'd be a waste of money, George. If we had a royal commission, hmm. we'll only do a royal commission if we're pressured to do a royal commission to make it look like. And then we'll ignore thing. it. And then we'll ignore it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, whether or not that. Really, I mean, the, the problem is, is the culture, right? Um, that's part of what the Four Corners um, article was about. It's not so much about the position of these women, I mean, that's part of it, but, but it's also about the culture of mm. certain people in that building. Um, uh, the problem is changing, they- that, changing that is is something that's going to take time, and I don't know how they're going to do that. If they do decide to fire Linda Reynolds, the defence minister, but for her handling of the this this issue, um, 
it'd be quite awkward for them because she's like one of the five women in the LMP <laughs> that actually has a seat that matters at mm. all, you know, that has a, a portfolio that sort of matters at all. So like it really, it is, uh, it does exemplify how much of a problem the LM, the, the Liberal mm. Party has with women um, because like she's one of the few prominent ones. Like if you yeah. get rid of her, it's not going to look good. You know, it's it's interesting because like it's a story where most of the, in the Liberal Party, where most of the major players are women. Linda Reynolds, the Defence Minister, Michaelia Cash, you know, obviously, mm. um, you know, uh, Brittany Higgins, the the victim. Like, yeah. it's unusual, I think, from a Liberal Party perspective to actually... Um, well, it goes to show that it's not so much about empathy in women and trying to understand that. Maybe part of it is, mm. you know, that, that those women are still, like, subject to that male-dominated culture and they're within it and they're also, like, enabling it to an extent, they're, maybe. They're, they're participating in it to some degree. They would have to be. Yeah. The big thing here is... There was an election on, and they've deliberately hushed it up. Mm. Now, like the question, the, the the thought bubble or the the thought experiment is: Well, what happens? What would have happened if that had came out around the end of March or beginning of April, twenty nineteen? Where we still would have been talking about Labor. negative gearing and dividend cash imputations and all the mm. other dumb things oh. that lost Labor the last election. Do you think though? Like, was it how much was it? Wasn't a the swing was big. I don't know. I, I just wonder whether or not it would have been a tighter margin. Do you know what I mean? Or whether or not maybe Labor would have been able to somehow grab hold of the narrative again. Um, I don't know. I just think it would have. It was a pretty significant thing, and I think they they knew that. And the, that's the why impulse was to cover it up, right? Yeah. The impulse was to not have it come out in case it blew back and looked badly which, on them. Which yeah. I think is like that. That is the bit that gets me as being like reprehensible. Like the culture, we know about the culture, it has to change. But the fact that it was deliberately, do you know what I mean? Like there's a deliberate suppressive thought process in that that's not something that's sort of implicit bias. I mean, there's that there as well. But it's mm. but it's a decision someone or a group of people have made to this woman. Yeah, it was to, some ha- house of cards shit to cover it up. Like yeah, legitimately, it is a real sc- cover up and scandal. And, they and, these people, and some of these people are still working within the Liberal Party. That, most most of them are, yeah. Mm. And that's that's the thing that I find sort of scary, to be honest. Like it's, yeah. Like where do they, what what happens to these people, and what are they doing now, and and how does that affect everyday Australians if if you know these kind of people are running around with this kind of self interest? It's um, um it, it's impunity. Like it is the very definition of of um, power corrupting is is feeling as though you as part of the ruling class don't have to adhere to the same rules as everyone else. It's the worst kind of corruption. Mm. Um, yeah. And hopefully, you know, Australians have a famously short memory in terms of politics. So by the time the next re- election rolls around, it probably won't be an issue of contention. Um, I I hope that this is remembered and it gets brought to the ballot box. Um, next time around, all you can do when a party um, refuses to have any accountability for themselves is vote them out next time around. Um, that's we, we will see. Mm. <laughs> I think it, honestly, a lot of the time just depends on the what happens in the fortnight before the election. Mm. If you can get some good or if you can get some, some news in that uh, – in that uh, fortnight, get an October surprise is what you're saying. An October surprise, mm. uh, then then you're in a much better position. Um, but, yeah. I would like to finish the show. So um, Pete Evans um, on something a little bit lighter. So Pete Evans, a celebrity <laughs> only chef, only a little bit though. <laughs> uh, Pete, Pete Evans, a celebrity chef and a world famous fuckwit, has uh, along with us and everyone else has also been banned on Facebook for spreading anti-coronavirus, uh, uh, anti-vaxxer misinformation uh, at long last. So um, I also remember there was some like weird like white supremacist thing that he was involved with. I don't remember yeah. exactly. Just, yeah, he, he, shared he, shared memes. Memes. Yeah, he shared a meme that included uh, like the black sun or something. I think it's like a, a symbol of associated with like uh, white supremacy, neo-Nazis, whatever. Uh, like a, a, a butterfly with 
the black sun on its back talking yeah. to like someone in a in a make america great again hat i didn't even get the meme i was like i don't I don't understand this, but everyone said, yeah, that symbol's like a full-on Nazi thing. That like, meme oh, is, is oh, dense, cool. dense like a small sun, that meme. Yeah. That was, was that like, is oh, cool. Deep. And then people, and then, yeah, he he tweet, he tweet shared it saying, like, a lot of people have different interpretations of this this comic. Like, you know, makes you think or whatever. I was like, I can't even think of one interpretation mm-hmm. of this comic. I don't know. What, what does this even mean? Everyone says, well, it's a Nazi thing, so whatever. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, just classic Nazi stuff. Anyway, so Pete Evans yeah. is banned off Facebook. Um as to whether it'll really make any difference to his life or his income, probably not. He's got hundreds, th- hundreds of thousands of ardent followers that are happy to, to you know, follow him around. I'm sure he's got buy their email t-shirt. list. Yeah, buy his t-shirts, buy his fucking cookbooks or whatever fucking paraphernalia. $15,000 non-coronavirus preventing light machine. <laughs> I, I wish I made that up. I have no further questions. Um, yeah. Where do I sign? Um, I wish I was- so if you do want to see uh, news... And 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 not have to rely on social media networks in order to be able to get access to this sort of stuff. Uh, if you if you too want to see this article about Pete Evans being a fucking moron, um, what I would recommend is following the apps. So downloading the ABC app onto your phone, um, downloading you know quality news publications that you can get access to their stuff. So obviously BBC is really good. Um, BuzzFeed actually um, has a pretty good app from what I understand. Um, there's a couple of them. So I would encourage you to download these apps and get access to this sort of news content directly. And then that way, like me, you don't ever need to spend any fucking time on Facebook at all going What forward. about Apple News, George? Um, I haven't really played that much with Apple News. It's really just another channel that aggregates other people's content. So I'd rather go support the channels directly if at all possible. Yeah. Um, but... And there is also another service called um, Feedly, which I'd like to recommend. So Feedly basically allows you to subscribe directly to the RSS feeds of various providers. And you can sort of put these things together and customize your news feed experience based on publications that you would like to see. And it puts it all in a nice reader and it's very streamlined and nice and it's ad free and, you know, free and all that sort of stuff. So if you do want to... um, follow the news content without having to rely on algorithms and third parties and other kind of bullshit. Feedly is a great place to start or look at the apps directly. I want to give people like actionable steps for what you can do to not have to mm. fucking listen to Facebook. If that makes sense. Just get in the algorithm, bro. Just like, just, just submit. <laughs> just submit on that note. We have been, we are, or we always will be our natural selection. Make sure you visit us at our salubrious home on the web, unnaturalshow.com. That's our own website. So you don't have to, stay connected with us through only Facebook and then Facebook will shit all over us as soon as they, uh, as soon as we are not profitable or uh, useful to them any longer. Um, you can follow us on all the bullshit social medias that have do or ever will exist, understanding that they can be taken from you at any time and may well be taken from you at some point. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now Twitch. This is where we're streaming live today at unnatural show. And make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at George Tippos. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom D. Heath. You can follow me on Instagram at AC Doreen. And um, to the uh, boys and girls asking us on our Twitch stream right now if this is Fortnite or 1984, the answer is yes. Thanks for listening, guys. Love your faces. We'll see you next week.